the noon hour. Welcome. My name is Jenny Napier. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the executive director for Guada. And uh, today is really all about celebrating small business, talking about entrepreneurship. So I'm going to do a very brief intro into Guada and then let the real program begin. Guada is a 501c3 nonprofit. Our mission is to bring people and technology resources together to create a thriving community. Bottom line, we boil down to three focuses, technology, entrepreneurship, and STEM education. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of these, but Guada, uh, being a nonprofit, we're a membership-based nonprofit. I encourage you to check out membership op options. If you are an individual business owner, it's $80 a year. And if you're a large business of 10 plus employees, it's $290 a year. So we have really affordable membership structure because we're about providing value back to the community, not just about uh, growing profit on the bottom line. So we've got a great uh, program and lots to offer. We have some upcoming events that I'd like to plug since I have a captive audience. Uh, next Thursday, we are starting Tech Talk and Happy Hour. This is a very informal, casual environment. It's going to be at Badger Mountain Brewery. 4.30 to 6 p.m. If you're a Guada member, you get a free beer, right? We, uh, we like to take care of our members. Uh, so I encourage you to come down. We're going to talk about tech issues, tech, uh, new tech developments. Um, I've got a great board. Uh, Scott Ptolemy is uh, joining the Guada board. Jordan Lindstrom, Ron Brown. I've got a lot of tech people behind me. Uh, so it won't necessarily be me leading that conversation. We're excited to have it. Uh, as you can see, uh, we've got a full panel this year. One thing I want to highlight is this entrepreneurial panel concept. We're doing three of those this year. So this is our first one. As you know, our focus is around the next generation of business owners. In July, we're doing an entrepreneurial panel that's called Women Rule the World, and it's female-only entrepreneurs. And then in November, we will have an entrepreneurial panel around businesses that have gone awry. So taking business owners, talking about not their successful company that they have now, but the ones that failed before, and learning lessons from that. So if you enjoy today, I encourage you again to become a member and come to those upcoming events. Uh, we wouldn't be here without our support partners, and we want to thank Port of Douglas County for their support in our organization. We also want to thank Port of Chelan County, as well as Wenatchee Valley College Center for Entrepreneurship. So these are three great organizations that are really about supporting North Central Washington. And with that being said, I want to welcome Stacey Lukensmeyer. She's with Wenatchee Valley College Center for Entrepreneurship. She's also a Guada board member, and she's going to be leading today's panel. So thank you guys for being here. Yes. Yeah, as Jenny said, I'm Stacey Lukensmeyer. I'm the business and industry liaison for the college, so the Center for Entrepreneurship is my area of responsibility. And so it's an absolute honor and a pleasure to be able to partner with Guada uh, for these entrepreneurial panels for the whole series. So it's very nice to be here, and I'm looking forward to hearing from our panelists as much as all of you are. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do a quick introduction for you. Everybody should have on the table a document that has a little bit of info about these folks. So I'm going to start uh, up on the left of our panel there with Dan, or Dan Rodriguez. He has Cafe Columbia. And if you take a look at his professional history on this paper, you'll see that he has quite a technical background. So now with Cafe Columbia, he and his wife have a uh, diverted life a little bit from this past history. He says that they've always had uh, a culinary interest, the two of them, and have liked to cook at home. This uh, Cafe Columbia is actually their second business of this type. They own another one up in Leavenworth where they got to uh, test recipes uh, with nuts, etc., to really perfect their craft a little bit before this venture. Uh, he also said that besides running his business, they are spending time raising two teenage daughters at this point. Uh, so they're very uh, involved in soccer with that. And he has one that's ready to learn to drive and anxious to get a job. So thanks, Dan, for joining us and for being here today. Uh, then we have Alan Larson with Firehouse Pet Shop. So Alan um, has a, a, this business located in downtown Wenatchee. He and I were having a little bit of fun trying to make up good bio stuff for him. And so he told me that he was a child actor, and he had lost the role in Footloose to Kevin Bacon, which is why he has a bacon obsession still today. And then he confessed <laughs> that this is not at all true. Um, but he did give me a little true fact about his favorite vacations. It's always with family. It usually involves uh, Disney in some way, shape, or form, and that they have uh, four 
four kids and now a daughter-in-law that are involved in those family vacations. So thank you, Alan, for taking the time. We have Raphael here from La Para Radio. And uh, Raphael, he was in California from 1981 until 2012. So about over half his life, or about half his life was spent down there. So he's been here in our valley for three years. And he said that now it really just feels like this is his new world. So we're glad to have him here today. You can listen to him live from 6 to 10 every day, Monday through Friday. He says his radio station, even though it's online, it's very community oriented uh, and it has a, a solid Wenatchee and East Wenatchee focus. So thank you, Raphael. And Jordan Lindstrom is next with Web Guides. Uh, Jordan's got a really nice, interesting fact here. He says that he wrote a column in a small weekly newspaper, and he's estimating the readership to be about 20 people, probably. <laughs> so thank you, Jordan. <laughs> and uh, Kara Malloy with Little Sun Hat is our last panelist there on the right. And so her business was featured in Vogue UK last year, uh, which I personally thought was even more exciting than Vogue that we have here in the US. It has that nice little uh, European flavor to it. And she is currently writing, beginning to write for Wenatchee Mom Blog. So thank you, Kara. Uh, let's have a little round of applause for all of our panelists. And thank you, Matt. Now we get into the meat and the heart of why you are here. Uh, so our very first question, we'd like you to tell us a little bit about how you got started. So Dan, I'm going to have you go ahead and get us rolling. Um, Kathy and I, like, like uh, you mentioned earlier, transitioned from our IT careers over on the west side. And uh, I also had the opportunity to work virtually from home for quite a while. Uh, we actually have a home in Plain, Washington. and. Uh, uh, after some time, um, the consulting company I worked for uh, was requesting I started traveling. And uh, before we moved here, I traveled a lot, yeah, usually every week. Could be East Coast, could be West Coast. And um, we just decided that we wanted to stay, uh, spend most of our time in the Valley, raise our kids here, not travel so much. So we decided to look for a business that uh, we could open up that would provide us some extra income and possibly I would join the IT field here in Wenatchee or, you know, have another opportunity. But we put all of our focus into that business, and that was Almond Blossom and Leavenworth. Um, and uh, it's a, a specialty food store, and we developed a bunch of recipes for um, gourmet nuts, which we sell to the folks, the local folks there, and also a big tourist market, as you know, in Leavenworth. And then we also have an online presence. We have an e-commerce website. And... Um, from there, uh, the Bibus Market opportunity came up, and we decided to we wanted to participate in that, and opened up another almond blossom there in, in uh, the Pibus Market with the same sort of a model as Leavenworth, and that one uh, primarily catered to uh, local folks, um, but our our tourist business is growing there, and. Uh, there was a bakery that was in the uh, market when it first opened, and unfortunately um, didn't didn't make it. And uh, there was a spot there for quite a while. And the uh, Pibus Market Management team were kind of poked us and said, "You guys, we like the way you run your business. Do you think you want to take that on too?" And we said, "We must be crazy, but uh, uh, sure, we'll do that." And uh, but we wanted to go into it. Uh, in a, in a, you know, the products that we were going to offer in the service was going to be a level above, uh, or, you know, at the level that we uh, we thought it should be. And that meant having enough staff for, um, to have good customer service, professional baristas, and uh, all of our food and bakery goods would be scratch made. So it sounds like you had quite an intentional infrastructure started. At yes. Yeah. I mean, we wanted to do it right. You know, when we... There's all kinds of places that you go in the Central Valley or, or in Seattle or anywhere in the country where you go, wow, these guys are really doing it right. And this is, we've been, you know, we, we did a lot of traveling. We went to a lot of those places and had some ideas of what we wanted to have. So we tried to, that's what we tried to implement. Excellent. So. Excellent. Alan, how about you? How'd you get started? With the uh, Firehouse Pet Shop mm -hmm. in particular? Okay. Uh, my wife and I both worked for Corporate America for about 28 years for a big box retailer. And um, 
boy, 28 years of good, solid, on-the-job training, but uh, that saying kept haunting both of us, carpe diem, seize the day, and what could we do in, that would provide us a, um, I don't know, a little bit more enjoyable life? And uh, so instead of uh, having a reliable source of income, health insurance, uh, five weeks paid vacation, we decided to become small business owners. And uh, <laughs> no, no uh, looking back, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's very interesting, though, uh, how we fell uh, upon opening a pet shop. Uh, we uh, left our company, and at that point, we uh, were exploring several different options, uh, be it restaurants, where we had some interest in that as well, uh, to clothing boutiques, which my wife had some serious interest in, and I was going along for the ride. And uh, uh, somebody suggested we open a doggy daycare, of which I just scratched my head and said, what? Uh, I'd never heard of such a thing before. And uh, it evolved from the doggy daycare situation, which I totally understand now, to a pet supply store. Um, and, and it was actually, uh, it was through checking out some competition. I was over in the Mill Creek area, and I walked into a small mom and pop shop. And the first thing I did, uh, being business mind, minded, if you will, was walked in and I saw how many employees were in there. And they were all adults, and they were all obviously getting paid, and they were all smiling and having a good time. Then I noticed the customers were smiling and having a good time, including the ones with four legs. And uh, it just felt amazing. So we had wanted to be in a business that my wife and I could do together, uh, which has been absolutely amazing to be able to be with your spouse uh, pretty much 24-7 with occasional bathroom breaks. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's no, there was no looking back and uh, we just uh, have had just a blast doing it. Perfect, perfect. Rafael, how about you? Um, I don't know if you know, but uh, a lot of people start businesses in their garage. Uh, that's how I started. But I believe that probably 30 years prior, when we were kids, maybe I was 10, um, 11, we used to uh, play the records at, at, back at, at home in El Salvador. And some type of made up stereo equipment, but the kids thought that we had the best radio equipment in, in the community. So we will have parties at, at our house. We were 11, 12, 13, some bigger kids. We will, we will play those black records. Remember those black records? <laughs> and then I will be the DJ. <laughs> so I believe I had it in me when I was 10, 11, 12. And I usually MC at all school functions. And I was 9, 10 years old with the microphone and presenting all the different acts at school. So when I came here to the United States in 1981, ran away from the Civil War. Um, I started looking to see what opportunities were there, so I started as an intern in, in a radio station in LA, California, and it took off, I took off from there. I learned the DJ, that was not my thing. I moved to news. I learned that that was very important, high paid job, and I decided to learn journalism. I became a reporter, news reporter, in that radio station. Then I went to study journalism got my certification at UCLA Extension. <laughs> and that was a lapse of maybe 15, 20 years. Um, and then you came I, here I, and I came did this yourself. I came here 2011 for vacation in August. I thought that this was paradise. So I went back to California, took care of some businesses, and moved here in 2013. And I learned that. I was doing online radio without me knowing because somebody had connected our uh, one of our radio stations in San Bernardino, California. I knew that it was an AM radio, and AM radio had the same sound of an FM radio with an AM frequency. I learned how to connect everything, and I learned how to figure it out. So when I came here to an I figured, you know what, let's do that on my garage. See if we can do that. And we figured it out. We Excellent. figured it out. So now it's like, we're thinking about maybe three more radio stations, one in the, each state of the West Coast, um, California, Oregon, Washington, and Nevada, so that we have a little mini network on online radio focused on the local communities. Wow, that's going to be fun to watch develop. Excellent. Jordan, how about you? How'd you get started? So I moved here to take a job at Mission Ridge from Seattle 
uh, about four years ago now, and uh, it was a it was a great job. Um, midway through the the second year that I was there, I found out that my wife was pregnant with our second child, um, and so I decided to quit my job, which was a good job. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it's interesting to me hearing how the, the pathway that people go. Um, for me, it was I had a I, I had a great job at Mission Ridge. I actually I loved it, and I still love being up there. But uh, truthfully, I I I had an opportunity with a with a, a business in Seattle. To my background was in um, website project management and um, developing really big websites. So there's this opportunity with this company in Seattle that was going to be a really big website. And we started the process of, of going through it. Um, and I prayed about it a lot. And I was like, OK, God, you think that this is like a good opportunity for me? And so um, I quit my job, gave up my health insurance with my wife five months pregnant, and tried to start my own business. And then within a month, that company um, had changed ownership um, or leadership. And they decided they didn't want a new website. So I was like, what is going on? <laughs> like, um, but somehow, uh, through all that process, so I, I got a phone call from someone who, who Kara actually knows who does, um, who sells jump ropes online. And I started helping him with his website and, and just started meeting e-commerce. It's funny, I think I've already met some e-commerce entrepreneurs in the room, but there's, there's lots of people doing e-commerce in this area. And it just started happening that that I started connecting with e-commerce entrepreneurs, um, and I was able to help them improve their businesses online. And it's not what I had, I set out to just build regular web, like big websites for bigger companies, and now I'm helping small e-commerce companies do better on. So it's and, and it making just sort a of, big difference for us locally. It just sort of happened. Yeah. 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 Kara, how did you get started? Well, I made um, a little sun hat after the birth of our fourth son. And I have no daughters, so I made him the girliest, big bonnet type sun hat. And my husband said, you cannot put that bonnet on our son. You just can't. And I said, it's not a bonnet. It's just a little sun hat. He's just going to wear it in the summer. And a lot of my friends loved the little bonnet on my boy. And so I started making more and selling them to my friends. And it just kind of um, took off from there. Um, now we sell on our website, and I love to collaborate with other mom makers, whether they're here in the valley or some friends across the pond um, in the UK. So it just kind of became something that I felt was necessary to soothe myself from having a fourth son and not a daughter. <laughs> and now we call it a little sun hat, not a little bonnet. <laughs> so that's how we started. So as you can tell now, you know, we've set some foundation for each of these companies. The next question I have for you is kind of short and, and sweet here. So um, tell us about the first success that you experienced, that one moment where suddenly you felt like you were on track. And anyone who would like to start? I think for me it was our first sale, you know, when someone else says, that product, that thing, what you're doing is so great. Here's my money. Here's my, you know, the people work hard for the money. And it's whether they go to a job or they make their own money. You know, money isn't scarce, but it's definitely that favor thing that. So when somebody first gave me that first $20 and said, I love what you have, you know, that's when I felt, OK, I think there's other people that would do the same thing. Nice. Jordan, you're smiling. Oh, I was just thinking that I I still am waiting to feel like uh, <laughs> I did it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't know, maybe that's just the the mindset of of someone who's just starting a business trying to support. No, them. no, no. That's very <laughs> entrepreneurial right there. You're still waiting for feeling like you're successful. Yeah. yeah, yep. Anyone else have a specific moment or are you there, Dan? Well, in terms of both of our businesses, I know uh, we're here to talk about Cafe Columbia. Uh, that's what we're that's one of our businesses. But for Almond Blossom, our first Christmas tree lighting, we had four people working behind our counter and people waiting outside of the door to get in, and the whole room is full. It's just very exciting. It was great. And for Cafe Columbia, um, again, with all of our 
efforts to make everything from scratch and have great customer service. Uh, for uh, four or five months after we opened, we were fortunate to have um, a line of customers out out into the concourse waiting to be served, and it was it was fantastic. It was great. So as you're describing that first with the crowds and the lines in your store in Leavenworth you're, and saying this is my moment of success, your wife is over here whispering, it was scary. <laughs> it was a little they scary because we, didn't, we didn't know how to staff really at the cafe and at that time. Uh, we didn't have that expectation mm -hmm. of that much business, but we've hopefully kind of figured it out. And, yeah. so. Alan or Raphael? Uh, so... At our shop, one of the things we really wanted to do, as you mentioned, we like Disney. So anything that can create that, that emotional bond with uh, a customer, regardless of what their age is or, frankly, what their species is, because we like the dogs and the cats and, uh, as well. But, uh, so we have little plastic fire hats that we give the little kids when they come in and, and shop at the store, and, and they feel pretty proud wearing those. And uh, we also offer uh, complimentary coffee. Uh, for the adults, and uh, my wife wanted that. I wanted a snow cone machine, so um, we got a popcorn machine as a uh, as a compromise. Uh, and we do also have some real tiny little shopping carts that are designed specifically for the kids to push around. And so that's one of those highlights for us. Uh, but that one moment was my wife and I were working in the center of the store, and uh, this boy, he's probably about five, six years old, just comes booking up. He's got his hat on and uh, that he brought from his previous visit, got the shopping cart, and he kind of tugs on me and says, hey, do you remember me? And, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to remember everybody, but, uh, you know, that kid obviously remembered the shop. So I'm like, yeah, I think I remember you. And he goes, remember last time I was here, I got popcorn, you gave me a hat, and I pushed the shopping cart, and you showed me how to ring things at my register. And I said, yeah, I do. And he goes, yeah, let's do that again. <laughs> and it was just one of those moments. I looked over at my wife, and her and I just smiled from ear to ear. And uh, repeat customer yeah. right there. Yeah. 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 Rafael, yeah. you have a moment. Yeah, I remember when um, when I was knocking on doors in 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 visiting businesses and telling them about this online radio, and the concept was not accepted at the beginning. It was like, who's who listens to online radio? And then I figured it out when I said, well, have you listened to Pandora? And then, oh, yeah, Pandora, yeah. Everybody was familiar with Pandora, but I said, Pandora, figure it out that your business can be announced on their, um, with your zip code. They can trace the listeners, and then they play your commercials on that region. So I said, well, they don't have a DJ. I'm the DJ here in town. And it's like, I figured it out, like, Oh, okay, so you can listen to me. I'll go next week, and then I'll remember me. Oh, yeah, yeah, I listen to you. Yes, that's pretty good. And it, so it's like I figured things out on, like, just like on a daily basis. We started the magazine a year later after we started the radio, and that became like the complement to the radio because it's like more tangible. So I went to visit one of my clients. Uh, she's an attorney in town, and, and she bought, the, the, the yearly subscription for the first issue, she believed on it. And for some reason, I don't know how we figured it out later, that the magazine ended up in Bridgeport. Somebody came to shop here in town. They took the magazine to Bridgeport. And my client told me, did you hand out magazines in Bridgeport? And I said, no. Well, I'm going to have to find out because I got a call from Bridgeport. She became my client, and she's paying for the whole year of advertising for you. And I was like, wow. So I got a really good testimonial. I have it in writing, too. So it's like, this is why I need to keep pushing both. In the your and your moment of success yeah. came from your client's moment of success. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, so this next question is a common one for most entrepreneurs. They struggle with the moment of when do they bring on a professional service provider to help them. And it may be with the bookkeeping. It may be with the legal side. Um, what or when was the moment where you hired your first professional service provider? Or when was the moment you knew you should but you didn't? <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we brought on accounting 
accounting services. That was the first thing. And we still need more accounting services. I'm still doing all of our data entry for our sales receipts and whatnot, um, and uh, which gets backed up, and then you have to, you know, sit down for two days and put it all in. Um, but all of our major you know, tax reporting and paying quarterlies and all that is done by our accounting service. So we did get some web service help from Lisa in the back there. Uh, I was I, I did web, web development I, again as an IT consultant, but uh, at the time I was just too busy to take it on, and she helped us with that. So excellent, working on your business, not in your business. There. Yeah. So. Okay. Alan, how about you? Uh, very similar. The first person that we hired was an accountant, mm -hmm. and uh, then we hired a CPA. Uh, well, the first one was a bookkeeper. I'm sorry, and then uh, we hired a CPA to help us fill out the LLC paperwork. And amazing the information that a CPA can give you when you think you know what in the heck to do. Mm -hmm. um, it's amazing how much money they can actually save you and steer you in the right direction. Uh, so no regrets on that. So anybody who opens up their own sooner. business, <laughs> yeah, definitely yeah, implore you to find a CPA and shop around. Find one that you feel comfortable with uh, that you can trust. And, and that's one of those ones, the legalities, uh, none of us want to end up on the wrong side of... Uh, of the law. Especially if you have employees. Yeah. Yes. Good advice. Mm -hmm. Rafael, how about yeah, you? Yeah, I, I remember hiring somebody to help me with, uh, with IT problems and we had a, a website with audio, um, you know, 24-7 and I'm only up like 20 hours out of the 24 because, uh, <laughs> you know, so I need to make sure that those four hours where somebody was taken care of. So we figured out that there was a program of software available that can call my phone if the website goes down for some reason and then I have to have a backup plan. So we figured it out now that, that there is a, a backup website that can shoot the air uh, signal. And I didn't know that we could do that. I didn't even know how to connect the online audio streaming to the website. So I, I hired somebody to train me, to teach me, to so I can learn how to do basically everything. I didn't know how to do the web uh, design myself. I just knew how to operate the radio equipment. So I learned that with a professional expert in uh, audio uh, web development programmer. You know, it was like so complicated at the beginning. It was like. I just want to talk. I just want to play music, you know? And that was very early on. You needed to do that then. Very right early. Yes, right yes. And yeah. figured it out. And now it's like, oh, that's how it's done. Yeah. Yeah. Jordan? So I'm just going through that right now. I just hired an accountant and a lawyer. And and how many years into your business are you now? This is the second year. Second year. And the, the, the reason is, if any of you are small business owners, I... I would work during the day, and then I would do all the business management stuff at night. And like, I was up till 3 a.m. last night. If I'm like this, it's because. And my wife is finally just like Jordan. <laughs> you need someone else to do this stuff. Like, yeah. so my wife made me. <laughs> <laughs> the best support system ever. You're getting more sleep now, thanks to her, aren't you? Well, I will be hopefully. <laughs> soon. Excellent. Good, Kara. Um, my very first hire was a full-time seamstress because I can't sew all of these hats all day long and be a good mother and work on the business. So I hired a sewer and I'm saving all of my money to hire Jordan next. <laughs> <laughs> you can hire me too. Well. Ooh, radio announcements. Yeah. I, just, we'll hire you I didn't pay her to say that. She just volunteered that. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, now you know. In person development in our panel. <laughs> Yeah, you can do Hispanic marketing too. To the Hispanic there you go. <laughs> so with where you're at right now, and this may be connected to the previous question, maybe not, uh, what one piece of advice would you give that you wish someone had told you? And this is very open-ended. You're all looking kind of stumped. Well, maybe I, it's hard to narrow it down to one. <laughs> actually, uh, you know, when uh, we're clued in on what that question would be, I realized that I'd been told all sorts of advice. I just didn't have it in the right perspective at the moment, if that makes any sense. It does. And uh, boy, if, if there was only one bit of advice that I could uh, I could share with anybody, well, can I make it too? Yes, okay. you have permission. OK. Um, once again, go back to Carpe Diem. I mean, seize the day. Every single one of us, we are, we've, our, our meter is running. 
we only have one life to live. And uh, to exploit this life that we've been given and do something that is enjoyable and fun and can take care of your family as well, why the heck, why are you not doing it? And uh, boy, that would be the one thing. And, and I wish I could go back and tell 30-year-old me, you know, which was only a year ago. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we apologize yeah. for laughing so hard, Alan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if I could go back in time and tell myself, have the confidence. I had a spouse slash business partner that made me feel comfortable enough to go out and do this. Uh, but the other bit of advice I would always throw out there, and you know, it's a buzzword. We've heard it a million times, but my God, there are so many people out there willing to be a mentor and share their wisdom and share their story. And if you got enough uh, uh, guts to listen to them and uh, actually soak it in, mm -hmm. and uh, you can really learn a lot of stuff out there from other people. And uh, they're also willing to share as long as you're not in the same market. <laughs> I think we have quite That's a few true. people out here who are now looking at you as the mentor that they could possibly learn absolutely. from too. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, Kara, piece of advice. What do you wish someone had told you? Um, well, I wish that I would have listened when people said it takes time. I think um, a lot of these before and after stories where I quit my job and I now have a successful business, it's not overnight and you don't see this journey in between where, you know, there's no money and there's no, they don't know what to do next or, you know, this big thing happened and then they're successful. So I think when I first started, I thought, I'll make my product, I'll open my website, I'll, you know, do everything that I know how to do. Um, but I didn't realize that it would take a lot longer than just opening a website and a lot more work than just putting it out there. So um, patience and keep working and keep getting better and to keep learning and keep talking to other people, I think is something that I would have, um, I should have listened to. Mm -hmm. Next. Um, my advice probably will be that even though you think you know it all, you should always uh, look for somebody that can mentor you, like he says, because mm -hmm. You might know a lot of your world or your skills or whatever your job or your industry that you are familiar with, but you're still going to need an accountant. You're still going to need a lawyer. You're still going to need somebody else that, that, that could help you provide information. So it's always resources out there that you need to reach out before. And I think that you also need the business plan. <laughs> you, you just can't just have it in your mind. You know, I think that it will help, even though it's kind of late for me. Three years later down the road, I'm still working on my business plan because every day things are changing. Mm -hmm. Now I'm thinking I'm selling uh, little capsules of horoscopes to other radio stations. And the talent is right here in Wenatchee. She's doing a wonderful job. I developed that person doing a workshop. So now it's like, I'm doing a workshop. I'm finding talent. I'm developing new products. And it's like, my business plan doesn't end because I know that I'm finding new things. So. Finding, finding somebody that can guide you to reach your objectives before you start a business is a good thing, but always be ready to change. Excellent. I would say um, I, I hired employees. There came a point where I hired employees. And that was the, like, I'm, I'm glad I did it now, but at the time I was like, what am I, like, as soon as you have to start working with the government on payroll issues, hmm. like, what am I doing? <laughs> Like it, that was the part where um, maybe I was blissfully ignorant, but it would have been nice to have someone, because I ended up with an L&I late payment at one point because I, I didn't know that I had to pay L&I, <laughs> like, or how to pay, you know, it's just there's, so that navigating the whole, um, all the government agencies that you have to work with when you have employees, it's exponentially more difficult than just working with yourself. Very sound advice right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would second that, and that's one of the biggest challenges that we have is not only starting with hiring and finding the right people, the, the reliable people that don't have a, you know, don't have a, a criminal record. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, in our business, we're working in a food business, and there's, you know, it's not really a career job. Uh, it's kind of an entry level almost. Um, we get a lot of folks coming in that are kind of one step. Uh, on the street, 
and we have to kind of figure that out. So we kind of developed uh, a way of interviewing and a methodology for trying to figure out who would work best in our business. And but that leads to reducing your pool down quite a bit. So um, especially for our segment. So that's uh, that's one thing that I advise is to make sure that you have sol solid hiring practices and look for a good profile that would fit your business. And um, the other piece of advice I have is make sure that you're implementing detailed, you know, we have 12 people working for us. We're not up there all the time, so we want to have detailed procedures um, uh, and systems in place that, so we can provide a consistent ex experience and product for our customers. And, um, you know, and as far as your accounting goes, make sure and keep in control of your costs and whatnot. I think everybody in the room should learn Excel. Mm -hmm. Excel is a very useful tool. And, um, and, and any other small systems that could help you in your business. Like we, we just purchased a food costing system, a very low foot footprint, just an inexpensive one. Um, we were doing all that on Excel spreadsheets all over the place. We had them at home on our server there and on our laptops. So we're helping to, we're, we're, we're uh, consolidating that all into one system and having it in one place. So. so this next question is about why you do business in North Central Washington. And this could go one of two directions. It could be why did you pick here to start a business or what's going to keep you here in your running your business? You're looking at me expectantly, Raphael. I'll, I'll go. Alan, go for it. So after uh, coming from El Salvador in 1981, I decided... <laughs> <laughs> he, he wants to pretend. Yes. <laughs> uh, I ended up here uh, based on vacation as well. And uh, I was raised up in Juneau, Alaska, nice little small town, and uh, I ended up in the Seattle area, which is not a nice little small town. It's a town in which you can lose your soul pretty quickly stuck in traffic. And uh, we vacationed over here lots. My uh, wife's parents lived over, uh, over in this area. And boy, when the opportunity came to open up our own business, it was an absolute zero no-brainer. We wanted to be in Wenatchee. Love the town. You can look to the left, you can see the mountains. And uh, you know, towards the Leavenworth area, it's beautiful. You look to the right, you've got a totally different scene. It's a beautiful river running through it. And these are people that live here are real people. They're people that know each other. They're people that care about each other. It was absolutely a no-brainer uh, that we wanted to be here and stay here. It is, I mean, kudos to everybody in this town for how welcoming um, you, we, all of us are to new folks that move here. Non-judgmental. Um, you're not a 425-er or a 206-er. Um, we heard that a lot when we were on vacation in a couple spots. Oh, you're from that side of the state. Um, but we just love the small town and everything this town has to offer. I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Dan, how about you? Uh, I, I would concur with Alan. I mean, we moved here from the west side as well. And, um, we swore that, you know, we would never leave here no matter what we had to do. And obviously, we're doing a lot now to be able to support ourselves, but we want to raise our kids here. There's no, no place we'd rather be. I mean, for now, I mean, it's a great place to live and the community is great. We have a ton of regulars that come into our, into our uh, um, businesses. And just like Alan said, it's a great community. Everybody knows each other and, you know, we have customers that know us and customers that come in that know each other and it's just great. I mean, we love it. So. Rafael? I, I think that um, I really don't miss the commute from Los Angeles. <laughs> and uh, the biggest traffic jam that I had here was over the bridge the other day. I think it was like 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I got like, oh my God, am I going moving back to LA? <laughs> so I'm so used to like driving around and you know, feeling good about that. Because I remember I used to commute three hours from one town to the other. Cause the radio station where I was working was in Sherman Oaks, uh, and I was living in San Bernardino, an hour and a half to go, but on the way back, uh, with the traffic, you know, it was like two hours and something, and it's like, I need to stop to get something to eat, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, because if not, yeah, so 
this town has been welcome um, mean to me and my family. You know, Ramon Rivera came here 10 years ago, started the mariachi program, and he said, this town is it's opening the doors to our family. I came for vacation, I fell in love with the place, and I still love this place. And I think that there is a lot of potential, not only for small business owners, but also for families to raise kids. And it's a wonderful people here. I met so many like people that I now that I consider my friends. And in three years, they have we have developed a relationship besides business, um, you know. And and I think that I have no reason to move out. Kara, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, my husband and I were born, raised here, so we have grandparents here and. Free babysitting keeps us here. <laughs> <laughs> and anytime we go on vacation, we come back and go, no, we really like it here. So here we are. Jordan, how about you? So uh, I think this interest, this area is a little bit interesting for entrepreneurism because I wonder if I would have done, like stepped out on my own, if I would have been in Seattle where there were lots of maybe jobs that I could go fill. Um, and I think it's... I'm I'm trying to decide if that's something that is a common occurrence here. But if you if you want to stay here and have a good job, um, you might be forced to say I need to start a business because there are like if I wanted to go work for a big web development company, there isn't one here, or a big marketing agency, there isn't one here. So I had to start something on my own. Um, so I think it's kind of interesting just to think about if you want to be here, it may be. And there's a good community, like I know Kara is a part of a group of, of people who meet that, that entrepreneurs who are, who are trying to make it happen, who, who get together, sort of band together and say, we're going to make it work. So I think um, even though we don't have a ton of manufacturing jobs, maybe in some ways that's a blessing to people who would have an entrepreneurial bent because it, at least for me, it forced me to, to do it. <laughs> That's interesting that the community lends itself to that. Uh, I know uh, statistically within the Wenatchee area, 84% of businesses here have five employees or less. Mm -hmm. So I, it's just within Wenatchee for that number. But wow. yeah, there is a something in the water. Yeah. OK, so our last question for you gets you, uh, gives you the opportunity to tell us a little bit about what you envision for your company in the future. Who would like to start that one? Um, for us, we're just our, our plan for right now is just to continue to offer the cons you know consistent uh, quality that we have for our customer service and products, and try to just grow our business. And we'll we'll continue to you know introduce new menu items or what have you, and uh, new um, product lines. But um, just continued growth. Um, we do want to see some expanded growth in our e-commerce market. We're going to be working on. Uh, some some things on our websites to address that. Um, maybe get some new channels, maybe Amazon or something like that. So that's our plan for now. Alan? So Jenny mentioned there's going to be three of these, uh, and I believe the one in November is the ones, the businesses that maybe failed. So our number one goal is not to be here in November. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Uh, probably our number two goal is, uh, for those of you who have ever started your own business, um, there's so many unknowns out through there. There's, there's the lack of sleep. Um, there's a lack of health insurance. It's like doing jumping jacks in a big pond of jello. I mean, it's just, a, it can be a, a mess. We want to be able to get to the point where we're actually uh, taking two days off a week. Seems like a pipe dream, but uh, we're close. Um, and, and we are just looking to stabilize ourselves. As a new business, uh, you had mentioned procedures. That is, oh yeah, we forgot to tell our employees that this is something we should be doing. So this year is all about stabilizing because, you know, your first year to two years, you're shooting off like a rocket. Um, originally, when we opened the business, our business plan that we put together was my wife would be baking for four hours a day dog biscuits. That was a dream of hers. Um, mine was that I would wear a cute little green apron and I'd be like Mr. Hooper on Sesame Street sweeping outside in front of my shop and I'd just be greeting people as they walked by. And maybe we'd hire one or two employees um, if needs be. Well, we're at that point where we have 12 employees and uh, almost everybody is working full-time hours on a regular basis. That's awesome. 
but to find that stabilization is where we want to be. Long-term goal is we have a lot of customers come in because they're touched by the experience and they're like, this is amazing, is to not create a franchise type environment, but create a looser type of a scenario where we can help other entrepreneurs and other pet lovers out there possibly open Firehouse uh, Pet Shop Station Number 2 in Coeur d'Alene or Station Number 3 in Burlington and help other people along the way as well. So those are our goals right through there. And maybe get a vacation. You can I'll dream. Second, I'll second you that. can dream, right? Yeah. yeah. So Raphael, you've given us a couple little snippets uh, that have kind of answered this question. What else would you like to add to that? Um, I'm working right now on trying to sleep some. You know, mm -hmm. my, but my dad said that sometimes he walks into my room and he listens to me talking in my sleep about commercials and news stations. And it's like, are you awake? And you know, so trying to get some sleep. Um, but the, it, my creativity level, I think it's expanding now to new products, new services. But I think that one of my most um, important goals is to make sure that everybody here knows what we do and how we do it so that maybe one of these days everybody will come and knock on my door or call me and say, Rafa, we would like to uh, be part of your team or your advertising group because every business needs to advertise. Every business needs exposure. Every business needs to partner with other businesses so, so that we can help each other. You know, And we know that the Hispanic community also is part of this, um, this um, market value that, you know, you need to reach out some someday. And we're thinking now not only do Spanish radio, but eventually find talent local that we can do an English radio station too, so that we can move in and, and try to work in both worlds. So that's probably our medium uh, goal, long-term goal maybe. Jordan? Well, my immediate goal is to build a website for our online business that we're running that we <laughs> I did. I went out and looked for your website. I couldn't find it. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the second, I mean, the bigger goal is, and you know this, Stacey, is, is there's lots of, as we, as, so Scott works with me and Scott's here, um, we've discovered there's lots of companies that are trying to make e-commerce work just for a lot of reasons in this area, and they all, there's some sh shared challenges. Um, and so we've been actually talking to the port about a space that could almost be like a co-op type of shipping and receiving, and um, in they all a lot. There's a lot of the same struggles like inventory management, shipping and receiving. How do you um, account for all that, and then and then get great shipping rates if you're all basically bundling the service, you can get better shipping rates. So we kind of have this like grandiose vision of creating some kind of ecosystem that really supports e-commerce entrepreneurship in the area. And, I'll see what happens with that. And Kara? Um, tomorrow, I'm launching my first round of um, original fabric for our hats. So um, the, the goal of ours is to continue to develop our fabrics and our own prints and become that hat that all of the stylish moms want in their hands. So um, I also have gotten an email from Anthropology, and I'm hoping to um, work on that relationship and get our hats into their hands as well. So it's just growth. Very exciting. So can I have a round of applause for our panelists here? Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.